Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? This is my computer Hustle podcast, and I am uh, joined by my good friend Orlando here, and we've got a different setup, right? And a different intro. It's supposed to be like, yo, yo, welcome to your Hustle podcast, and this is episode 255, an update episode. Yeah, we could have done that normally, but, uh, you know, things are a little different because uh, it's probably different for a lot of reasons. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see, obviously, I'm not in the studio. I'm in my car right now. Rolanda's in the studio. And if you're listening and you've never been to one of our YouTube videos that are not like a normal episode, you were probably like, what was that song? What was that? That was not the Pure House. You probably clicked on to episode 255 and thought, I clicked on the wrong podcast. This isn't Pure House Podcast. But it is Pure Hustle Podcast, and that is the intro that we use uh, with some cool video stuff if you've never watched one of our Monday minis or one of our Saturday uh, uploads. So uh, it's got a different feel to it, but we figured since we're doing something different anyways, uh, we might as well throw that at you guys. But uh, yeah, so what's what's the deal? Why are we doing this, Orlando? So, you know, we always want to be consistent about dropping episodes. And, you know, back in the day, you had access to the studio and I had to record from home. Now things have changed. The studio is on my property now. Uh, but unfortunately, I got a sick kid and, you know, just, you know, just to kind of play things well, uh, decided to go mobile on this one. And, you know, you never know these days, but I'm sure everything's all good. But we wanted to continue uh, bringing you quality content. Uh, and so we're going to move on with this update episode, episode 255. Uh, before we do, though, we did have an awesome buymeacoffee.com slash pure hustle uh, virtual meetup session. Uh, How did you enjoy that, Mike? Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of fun. In fact, uh, one of the one of the bummers is we you know kind of cut it short. Uh, we had, you know, obviously your son's not feeling well. Uh, we had limitations on Zoom, all that stuff that, that we want to we want to have longer ones because it's amazing. You know, we did 30 minutes. It was actually like 40, 45 minutes we did with everybody. And we had a good number of people on there. There's like eight or nine people. And it felt like we could have just kept going, right? Like that's the thing when you're when you're talking with people who are resellers and, you know, you've got something in common, uh, it just feels like there's never enough time because you, you get little tips and tricks from each other. And it's just such a great community to be a part of. So definitely thankful for everybody who supports us by watching, by commenting, by leaving a review. Uh, but those of you who support us through Buy Me a Coffee, that really, really helps us to uh, to keep going, to give us the the tools that we need. So that way, when we are uh, in a place where we're in a car, I have a webcam I can use and can use a hotspot and stuff so that we can still have podcast microphone. That's right. So, uh, so we thank you for those of you who support us uh, through that. And we want to definitely try and make it a monthly thing where we are, we're meeting with you guys that are supporting us monthly and want to, you know, have that extra, you know, time where again, it's not, new content we're not like creating new episodes it's just for supporters but it's just a way for us to kind of have a get together and chat and talk about how sales are going and again tips and tricks and it's a community session nice. yeah. yeah we learn a lot i mean this one we had all kinds of topics about people that were using the new ebay coupon codes which we'll talk about that here in a little bit uh and others talking about using qr codes uh we also had discussions about wholesale private label i mean it was it ran the gamut because we have a good kind of diverse group of resellers, uh, part-time, full-time, Amazon, eBay. It's just a great time. So you haven't yet joined us. Uh, the membership is only $5 a month. You just go to buymeacoffee.com slash pure hustle. Go to the link below. Uh, you can sign up for the year. You can sign up for the month. Uh, and also, uh, if you just want to say, hey, guys, that was a great episode. Learned a lot. Uh, you can just go to buymeacoffee.com slash pure hustle buy a couple of coffees and say thank you and or oh, just one coffee uh, and just uh, really appreciate that and thank you to everyone that joined us looking forward to the next one uh, we just get, keep growing and hopefully we'll have you know really large groups that we can learn a lot from um and uh yeah just really appreciate the support allows to keep doing what we're doing all right so this is now an update episode so i i want to you know let's start on good note mike how are things for you yeah i mean things are pretty good um other than the fact that I'm in a, a hot car, uh, it's actually finally starting to cool down a little bit right now. I don't want to have the air conditioner on because uh, when, I, when I'm driving in the car and I, I try and talk on like my Bluetooth, my wife's always like, I can't hear you. The sound like wind is blowing in. But you might hear cars go by. In fact, like literally right before we started recording, a, uh, a, a truck went by that had horses on the back and like they're like neighing and stuff. And I'm like, there's literally going to be like horses in the background. You do live off the grid. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, um, 
anyways, uh, things are going pretty good. Uh, for those of you who've been following, you know that uh, we have a new addition to my family. We just had an, our second son, and that's been awesome. I mean, less sleep than we're used to, of course, which uh, is a bit of a bummer. But uh, other than that, it's been amazing. And it, I think one of the best parts is it's finally going to let us start to move back into routine. So I just started school today. It was the first day back uh, with school. And I had the summer off. And normally, summers are the time for me where I can do a lot of sourcing. I can do a lot of listing. And this summer was just different, right? I had summer school for part of it, which kind of cuts in a little bit into my sourcing. But it was good because it was re really good revenue. Uh, and then the other part of it was we didn't know when we were going to go into labor, right? So like the last half of my summer was like, we could go into labor at any time. So we don't really want to like have like a lot of things selling right now. So we weren't really listing a ton of things. We had our, our, our handling time was like five days. Cause you know, if we went into labor, like this would be really bad if, you know, things started selling. So our sales were down and normally we would use summer for sourcing and listing and all those things. And, um, at this point, I feel like I'm finally going to be able to start getting back into a normal routine. Even though I'm going to school, even though uh, I've got work now until, you know, four or five o'clock every day, uh, I can have more of a routine and I've got my shed basically done. So I've talked in the past few episodes about getting solar lights put in there. I finished the solar lights. Uh, I talked about getting a air conditioner put in and I was able to do that, brought the generator that we bought up, uh, cut out a hole in the shed, installed a window air conditioning unit. And now I'm at a place where I can actually go after work, even though it's still 90 degrees outside and hot and humid, I can still, I can now go in my shed, turn on the generator, turn on the air conditioner and just list for or take pictures for like two or three hours. And if I do that once or twice a week, that gives us enough pictures to list throughout the week whenever we have time and we can really start to get our store moving again. And uh, we finally noticed that um, kind of, I guess, to give my random story, I mean, it's not really super random, but uh, the one uh, I think it was our last episode, we were kind of talking about how slows were just sales were just so slow uh, mm -hmm. the last month, right? Just just terribly so. You've had you had days where you weren't getting any sales. We were obviously having days. I think we were like a week at one point where like, is it the five day handling time? Is it just summer slowdown? And literally right after that podcast recording i'm driving home it's like oh i gotta sell and they've just been slowly coming in they've been probably every day we've had at least one sale now which has been really nice so as i'm seeing this uptick i really want to get through my death piles uh so i just i'm looking forward to you know going in the shed putting on some music putting on an audio book and just taking pictures and i think that this is going to be the first time in like a couple of months that the wheels are really turning again. Like I've been reselling a little bit of source in here and there, garage sales, a uh, little bit of listing, but it just hasn't been that the routine when it's just a little bit here, a little bit there. It doesn't feel the same. So I'm really excited to have that uh, routine going in again and hopefully really capitalize on the increase of sales we have coming up. That's good. I mean, that's good. And it's funny that you tell me that, you know, I, so I only had one day of no sales, but things haven't gotten better for me. And, and you know, I, I honestly, I don't know what it is. And we're all about keeping it real on this podcast. I would love to say things rebounded, things are better. Things are worse. And I'm not, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I mean, it's not like I've slowed down my listing now. I, so to be real with you guys, I've talked about before on the podcast, like I could get away with five to 10 listings a day and it would, be more than enough to cover my bills and everything. And I'd be just fine. And so I've ramped that up a little bit, done more, you know, usually 15 to 20. I try sometimes, but it, I put in more work and I haven't gotten the same returns and I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know if the eBay algorithm has changed. Maybe everything that I source, no one wants anymore. I, I don't know what's going on. And so Do you have any like negative, uh, any negative, marks on your account like no i 100 feedback i have no uh you know i'm a top rated seller i haven't had any cases closed without seller resolution i've had no defects i mean it's i ship out on time i mean i've done 
I've done everything. And if you catch that episode that we did a while back called eBay is dead, I, I put into practice everything I talk about in the episode. Like when, when I say things, it's not because I'm just making up stuff. It's what I actually do. And so this go round, I, I would say I've implemented the only thing I haven't done. I haven't, haven't hit the nuclear button of going to 30 to 40% sales on everything. Like, I just wonder what happens if I go 30% everything in my store. Like, would the, would the avalanche happen? Would I get sales or are, are things not going to happen? So, you know, and I know it's not, you know, everyone can say it's, it's eBay's throttling my, my inventory or I could say, you know, the economy is bad. But here's the thing. People are still making sales, right? Those of you that are listening right now, you're like, Orlando, wow, we had the best month ever, right? And so... I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, I'm hoping, I, I know, not hoping, I know things will rebound. I'm just, I'm kind of like little surprises mid-August and things tend to pick up. Now, here's what's interesting. On the Amazon, yeah, uh, excuse me, on the Amazon side, I'm a side, on the Amazon, Amazon side, <laughs> side, it's like being taken out by join, Amazon. <laughs> join the Amazon. Side. There you go. But on the Amazon side, things have picked up. And so, you know, I had this goal of getting 3,000 listings by the end of August. I'm not sure I'm going to aim for that right now. I, you know, you, here's the thing. Being a reseller, you got to pivot sometimes. And I I need to pivot to what's going to make. I, I, I got to make a good amount of money between now and September uh, because, you know, I, I don't want to delve into any capital uh, to be able to buy for Q4. And so, you know, um, it may be time for me to shift a little bit to Amazon. If you guys have been listening to us since day one, uh, initially when I went full time, I was about 70, 30, maybe 80, 20 Amazon. And then over time, I enjoyed the relaxing lifestyle of being an eBay full time seller because on eBay, you know, you don't feel like you work in a warehouse, you're not always packing things and they're not to FBA. Uh, you're not dealing with all the restrictions that Amazon has. Uh, and eBay, you have a little more leeway. eBay is more of a treasure hunt. eBay is not like retail arbitrage. It, it, it's a lot more enjoyable. And so, you know, right now I kind of, I, I need to adapt. I'll, I'll keep you guys uh, updated in a couple of weeks, how things go. Uh, obviously, I'm joking. I was going to say, obviously, if we're not in the studio next time, you know what happened. I'm just joking. It's not that bad at all. Not even close. But, you know. You always get these feelings, and I'm being real as an entrepreneur, and I hate using that because I, I don't feel like I'm an entrepreneur. I just think I'm a reseller that figures some things out. Uh, but you know, you learn to deal with the lows, right? It's not a continual up, 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 right? It's like anything, it's like stocks, it's like crypto, it's like everything. There, there needs to be some kind of a pullback at some time, and during that pullback, you refresh, you renew, you figure things out, and then you rebound, and then you go, Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, it's kind of like a, <laughs> you hear people like stocks always go up, right? Well, not all stocks always go up, right? But pretty much all stocks go up as long as they're value-based stocks, right? They're, they're, there's there's good fundamentals, right? And so in my business, I do believe I have good fundamentals. I do think I built an eBay business uh, that was meant to thrive and be full-time. And so I think things will rebound, but I am going to pivot a little bit. I'm going to jump into Amazon a little more because the difference between eBay and Amazon is with eBay, you can look up comps and you can check sell through, right? Based on how many items there are listed compared to how many items have sold. Uh, but even still, there is no guarantee that the item is going to sell, right? In good time, right? It could be a year, it could be two, it could be three, right? Or it could be tomorrow, right? Unless it's in a hot item. But with Amazon, Amazon has a ranking system, which would be crazy if eBay had ranking. Can you imagine if eBay had ranking on rain spooners? Like this rain spooner will sell in this amount of time, right? So with Amazon, I know if I find a good product and the rankings at a certain place, like I'm going to recoup that money in a certain amount of time. And so I think I'm going to, um, I have some last minute, I've been sourcing from home a lot. I just, not, not because I haven't been able to buy stuff. I just, you know, part of the move, I recognize how much money I had spent on items that I never listed. And we're talking about thousands. So, right? so you're talking about death pile? When you say you're oh, sourcing yeah. from home, you're going I'm talking that. about okay. like death, death, death. I hate it sounds terrible saying death racks, but it's r shelves of just like VCRs, DVD players, you know, Christmas decorations that I just, I never listed for whatever reason. 
And if you've been following us on Instagram, that was my new thing. It was like, hey, throughout the week, instead of going to the thrift, I'm going to instead show you guys something I found at home and why I picked this up. And here's the value. And this is what you should do to list it, to make it competitive and so on. And so, so yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of, <laughs> gotta keep, I got to keep it real. I can't, you know, I would love to come on here and say, hey, man, things rebounded. Things are good. Uh, I just wouldn't be honest. And so we'll see how things go. Yeah, buddy. I'm still smiling. All right. Hey, any random stories, Mike? Um, you know, so our last, uh, our last episode, we talked about, it was an episode, um, uh, our last Monday mini, we talked about categories that I like to sell in and I mentioned board games and book sets. And I guess my only random thing was after mentioning both of those, I had like probably that same day or maybe the next few days, a couple of pretty decent sales in those categories. So mm -hmm. it, it, it happened. I feel like, again, we talk all the time. We don't believe in like actually manifesting anything, but it's interesting how <laughs> there are times when it's like, you know, you're looking for something and you happen to spot it at a garage sale. And part of it could just be because you're actually more actively looking for it. Or uh, you you talk about a certain item that hasn't sold in a while and that's the thing that sells. So Everybody has superstitions. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, it would be a good superstition for people to have is uh, listening to Pierce's podcast or maybe sending in a comment. We've had a lot of people say that, uh, you know, after you we mentioned this, I found it. Or, uh, yeah, or after I, after you said you sold such and such, I sold one too. So, you know, who knows? If we're, let us know in the comments. If we are part of your, uh, your ritual, if we're part of the superstition that helps you get sales, we're good luck for you. Let us know so that uh, we can keep that going. And if we're bad luck for you, don't tell us. Uh, we don't. We don't need that on our conscience. So but that's kind of interesting. No, you know, I don't have like a random story either. I mean, basically, if sales are slow, how many stories can I come up with, right? If I haven't been outsourcing as much, how many stories can I come up with? Now, I mean, I had, you know, I always say there's two things I want to share. I always say if you don't know something about an item, it's okay to just list it and just wait for the experts to come in and let you know. Right. And, I, you know, I had these uh, cowboy hats that I listed. They were uh, Border Patrol hats. And I just listed them. I didn't think anything of them. And, man, I got so many, like, hey, you should measure the crown. You should measure the brim. Uh, what kind of material is it? What is the style? And I just had people messaging me information. And, you know, because people always ask me, like, here, Alon, do you know anything about this? I'm kind of scared to listen. And I always encourage people, like, just list it. Do the mo do do you know do your due diligence do as much research as you can, but over time, if somebody really wants it and they know what it is, they'll they'll either buy it and you're gonna be fine, or sometimes you might you know sell it for less than it's worth. But uh, you know sometimes you gotta just move merchandise, right? Or the people that really know what it is, they're gonna contact you. They're gonna let you know. And I get messages. I probably get messages. I want to say, and this is not an exaggeration, once a week from someone about, hey, you have this listed. It's actually this. Or you have this listed. Here's what else you should point out. Or actually, this is something that, and it's it's very informative. And that's why I love eBay. Uh, again, this is why, you know, I've been all about eBay because eBay to me feels like it's, um, how can I say this? It's, it's, it's it's more enjoyable than Amazon because you're always learning too, right? And I guess Mike and I are educators and we like to learn. And so so that's been a good thing. Uh, the other thing is interesting. Our last episode, if you haven't caught it, episode 254, dealing with reseller burnout. I was shocked about how much positive feedback we got on that episode. Uh, we, we had all kinds of DMs. Uh, we had people, you know, in the YouTube comments. Uh, we, you know, I had... You know, people, yeah, it just, the, the DMs were just kind of, I was like surprised because, you know, I had a, we had Cincinnati Picker who's, you know, I, I, I watch a show. He, they also have a, uh, uh, two, they also have a podcast, him and Lenny. Uh, I wish I could remember. It's a two guys something. I just can't remember. Uh, but, you know, I respect people in the community like, like Cincinnati Picker has been doing this for a while. And, uh, garage flips and, and so on. And so, you know, when, when they share our podcast and goes, Hey, that, that man, you know, oh, their, their podcast is two guys without jobs. What an awesome name. And, uh, you know, that, that means a lot to me because it tells me that like, 
yeah, reseller burnout's a real thing, right? Even the top tier guys, like Cincinnati Picker to me is a top tier reseller. Uh, and there's others out there too uh, that, you know, had messaged me uh, that, you know, they, they make a lot more than I do. And to me, when I watch them on Instagram, I'm just like, man, it comes so easy to that guy. Like if, if it seems like everything he touches is gold and flips or she's awesome at sourcing at this store and she always finds stuff, man, I would never burn out if I was that person. But when those people are messaging you and going, hey, I really needed that episode. I really appreciated that episode. Wow. I was like, OK, because I just, you know. So Mike and I come together with ideas and this one was just, I just randomly was like, Hey Mike, let's just be real about how things are with me right now. I'm burnt out. Let's just make this episode. And it was just, it wasn't like planned. It was just being real about how things are. And so I was, I was, I was impressed. I, I impressed in the fact that like how the real selling community is willing to be real with each other. And it also reminded me of like, you don't know what's behind on social media, right? You could have people that are just killing it, but they're actually like they're they're not happy <laughs> or, or they're or you know things are slow and so you might see that they have this incredible sale but that doesn't tell the whole story about what's actually going on in their business so anyways i, I know it's not like random story but you know i just want to thank you all you guys that listened to the episode if you haven't caught it it's episode 240 244 254 uh how to deal reseller uh, how to prevent reseller burnout and uh, I, I think there's some good stuff in there because if I'm not just saying it, plenty of others have said it. So check it out. All, All right. right. Here's another quality item too, AmericanBubbleBoy.com. So if you haven't checked out AmericanBubbleBoy.com. Now, when, when's the last time you had to bubble wrap something, Mike? Has it been a minute? Um, no, we, we bubble wrap pretty regularly. Yeah. We, uh, we... Now, go ahead. I was just gonna say we've uh, we've kind of been experimenting. So we normally when we get bubble wrap because we were getting it, you know, Walmart or whatever, uh, they pretty much only had like one option, one size. So we've been experimenting with American Bubble Boy with different sizes, different size bubbles. Really, and, uh, that's been kind of fun. Yeah, so it's been nice having so many more options to choose from, uh, and, and when you're not limited and you still can get you know your bubble wrap quickly, and it's good quality bubble wrap and it's inexpensive. You know, you're going to get it at a good price. It's nice because you could say, you know what? Should I try the four foot roll? What about the two foot roll? What about the big bubbles? What about the small bubbles? It, you can kind of really figure out what works for the inventory you have. And, and that's been, it's been really nice. All right. So if you haven't yet, go to AmericanBubbleBoy.com. Uh, and well, go to our link, actually. Go to our link below on our YouTube. Uh, and yeah, if you, you buy link. through that link, helps us out. Yeah, please use the link. In fact, it's funny because American Bubble is so good to us. So sometimes people will buy stuff and they'll put like, hey, I got this uh, after listening to Pure Hustle. Uh, and they will do everything they can to link those sales back to us. But the best way to help us out is just use the link. That link will directly, uh, you know, say, hey, got this from the podcast and it'll give us a small, you know, affiliate kickback. And it will, you know, again, provide a more reason uh, for American Bubble Boy to continue sponsoring us. Uh, great company. Uh, you know, I talk to Joel, the owner, uh, every once in a while. And uh, things have been great. And further business keeps growing. And it's because of you guys. So thank you so much. Uh, I just had to use a ton of bubble wrap uh, for what I'm going to share later, uh, an item that's sold. Uh, but what I love is I love the large four-foot rolls. Because if you have a large item, you don't have to, like, you know, kind of cut and paste it. You just roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, tape the sides, and you're good to go. So, and that's the four-foot roll. I think it's 750 square feet for $39.99. Uh, free shipping next day, two-day, or local pickup. So go to the link below. Yeah. All right. Are we ready for my, some reseller topics? Yeah, so are I... We, are I, we doing I'm sound gonna, on this one? So instead of sound and as a alternative to sound... Uh, we've just got the uh, the little ticker. Breaking news. This just in. Orlando. Things are happening all over the world. And uh, we don't have time to talk about 99.99% of them. But what we do have time to talk about and maybe uh, some some uh, expertise to talk about. because we, We're not qualified to talk about most of the stuff happening in the world. But we are qualified to talk about what's happening in the reselling world. And that's what we're going to bring to you. What's our breaking news today? 
Okay. Hey, so eBay Open just happened. Uh, and I know for a lot of us, it, the, the hard thing is when something is virtual, it's very easy to just for it to happen and no one talks about it, right? Because if there was an eBay Open, like a live event, you'd see all these YouTube videos on the recommended. I don't think I've seen any. I don't, I don't, you know, when we were at at eBay open, we had Instagram stories every day. We did two special episodes each evening. And so, you know, I do appreciate, I've always said this. I want to get them on the podcast. Jordan Sweetenham, if you're listening, GM of eBay North America, we would love to have you on the podcast. We'd love for you to be the first interview we've had in a while uh, on the podcast. It's been a minute. Uh, It's been a minute. And, uh, and the reason being is I, I find that Jordan is, like he, he understands resellers. He understands what we're about. So he had mentioned uh, one of the videos. So eBay open was basically, you know, you can go into rooms, right? They didn't, they use a different app than zoom, but it was basically like zoom. I think it's called Bevy or something like that. And you can go in rooms and you can ask questions. And then they had their keynotes. We didn't mention in one of his keynotes about the idea that he, you know, he really misses the interaction, the live interaction with other resellers. And it was great to hear that. It was because I got to tell you, eBay open, you know, one of the, my favorite memories from eBay open are just meeting with other resellers. It wasn't, I mean, some of the keynotes were kind of funny because uh, the former CEO, Devin Wendig knew how to work a crowd and knew how to get a crowd pumped and, and say random stuff every once in a while. But um, meeting with all the resellers, right. The, the in between the lunches, the dinners, uh, the late night, the crazy party at at the, um, at the concert venue, all that stuff, like, those are great memories and a great time of connecting and learning. And so I'm hoping that eBay open uh, happens live. It sounded like they're hoping to do something like that next year. And so, you know, hopefully we're in that place, but I wanted to talk about some of the key takeaways uh, from eBay open. And uh, all this is on their YouTube on eBay for business. They have videos of every single keynote, uh, every single seminar that they had, but here's a few things I thought were interesting. So you always got to listen to the CEO when he says something. Right. So, you know, the the current CEO used to be a former uh, executive at at Walmart. He was the guy that um, made basically brought Walmart to the level of not exactly Amazon, but they were, you know, it was under him. I believe that Walmart spent about a billion dollars to try to compete with Amazon. And they're, you know, they are competing. They are a competitor with Amazon. So uh, Jamie, uh, Ianon, I hope I said his last name right, but uh, Jamie had a few things to say, and and it was and it was interesting because, you know, I, I, good and the bad. Okay, so let's talk about it. So, one thing that eBay is pushing is coded coupons. Have you used any of those coded coupons yet, Mike? No, I haven't used them yet. In fact, uh, I didn't. I didn't even watch the the information on it. So, um, we, we talked about it a little bit during the the Zoom call we had. Uh, but I'm actually kind of in the dark a little bit on the code of coupons. So it's very basic. It's it's when people, when you sell something, you have the option, or when you send an offer, you have the option of sending people coupons, coded coupons specifically to your store. And so I have not used these extensively. I think I want to experiment over the next month and see how it goes. We had some uh, resellers on our Zoom call that said it worked really well, and then we had others that said it didn't work. So I'm interested in how it's going to work. But here's the thing. When eBay pushes something, that's something you should be doing because I, I think I they, they favor those kind of interactions in the search, and they've said that before, right? So whether it be item specifics, whether it be free returns, whether it be free shipping, like when eBay says, hey, this is what we're doing, this is what we want done, if you do it, it helps – you know, in you getting more conversion and sales. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah I think so. You're probably right. I mean, it, it may or may not, because we had some of the resellers mention they've been using the coded uh, coupons and they haven't had any converted sales. Um, and I feel like that would probably be me. I feel like I probably have some converted sales. Some wouldn't any more than like a regular sit and offer would. Uh, however, like you said, I think that there is something to be said for the fact that eBay is whatever is involved in the algorithm, right? Like they want to see positive interactions in their store. So things like your seller metrics, uh, not having, you know, negative things influencing your account, having a high sell through rate, all of those things are going to make your store seem more valuable in the eyes of eBay. And so, yeah, I can only imagine that. I mean, we noticed that even when it came to item specifics, right? 
when we were started adding the recommended, not even the required, we started seeing an increase in sales, not because people were looking for the random, you know, tags we were putting in, but because yeah. eBay saw that, yeah, we, we were, we were basically complying, right? We were doing the thing because that's what they want. They want data. They want to see what's working, what's not working. They're hoping this does work. And so whether or not they've already coded it into the algorithm to have a positive impact on your store, I'd imagine they do to some extent. And if not, it's still it's still you interacting on the site, right? There's a reason why companies like Poshmark want you to share, 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 right? Mm -hmm. it, and it's not because, it's not just because it's that much more effective in actually getting you sales, but it's because they want eyes on their page. They want as many eyes on their page consistently as possible, and they want you interacting on their page. And the more people, whether it's buyers or sellers who are interacting on their, their service, the better the service is going to be. And so they are going to reward that. And uh, I'd imagine that, yeah, that it probably will make an impact. So I'd say definitely use those coupons, whether or not those convert to sales for you. You may see an increase just due to the fact that it's uh, your work in the system. Yeah, agreed. So I'll get back to you guys in a month and uh, we'll see how it goes, those coded coupons. And hopefully business will be better. All right, now... Uh, the other thing, and this is a hot button topic, non-payments, but they actually addressed it. Uh, they they actually, they, it was addressed in two points. It was addressed in the keynote by Jamie, and he actually had an interview. Uh, and in the interviews, you know, it was brought up about, hey, are you guys doing anything about non-payments when it comes to offers? Now, we were told two years ago, somebody actually DM'd us about, they heard us talking about this on episode four or something about non-payments and that eBay said they're going to resolve it with managed payments. So now it seems, it seems that they are actually going to take action. Now, one thing I didn't like is I, I did hear at one point it was said, well, we're starting with fixed price and then we're going to go to offers, but it's like, wait, what? There's always been immediate payment with fixed price. Like that's, that's always been the case. Like you can't, I mean, there's a box that you hit now. They did say uh, both uh, Jamie and Jordan Sweetnam said that they were looking to when somebody sends an offer that be, while they before they send that offer or if you send somebody an offer that they have to put a source of payment uh, as part of that offer. And so automatically it should debit or it should take that money. So I know and, and I'm looking at Mike and Mike's probably like uh, that's common sense. Like every platform does that. Wait, no, I'm not. There's no audio right now, Mike. I'm not hearing you. All right. How about now? Okay. I'm trying there to mute go. myself in between me talking because I can't <laughs> hear what you're hearing, and there are cars driving by, and they're, you know, trying to you know, look out for our listeners. But, uh, yeah, I, it seems like common sense to some extent, but I, I would also see why maybe somebody would be a little confused. So if they send an offer and all of a sudden there's like payment information, they might think they bought it. Then you're going to have an upset customer and you deny it. It's like, wait a minute, I bought it. I put in my credit card. I, there are going to be users who just don't understand the system who are going to be confused. Because if you're on a system like Poshmark, you automatically know that's part of the, it's always mm -hmm. been part of the culture. Is you send an offer, whatever, you, there's only one form of payment you really have, right? It's, it's all set up. Whereas, yeah, eBay, maybe someone's paying PayPal. Maybe, well, not anymore, but you know, credit card, various things. And so I could see that if you send an offer and you have to like put in your information, people might be like, that, forget it, I'm not sending an offer. Or they might think they're buying it. The other thing that could happen is I'd imagine the other way, like if I send an offer to somebody and then they go to click, yeah, accept. And then it wants like payment information. They're like, I don't have time to deal with this right now. I'm like, I was driving or I'm somewhere, like I'm at a store. And so then they put it away. And then what the accepted offer like we don't see that they accepted it because they haven't paid and then it might not convert to a sell. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if they just hit accept and then they get the payment reminder. So I could see there being some issues on why they would delay it um, just because it hasn't been part of the culture. There has to be a reason eBay hasn't done it, right? Like they have to be thinking that this is going to cause some hiccups or problems, um, not just that they can't figure out how to make the system work. So I would be interested to see... I'm the other side. To me, it feels like eBay still running on America Online. 
Yeah. And they're making excuses Sometimes. for running out of America Online. Like, we're done. Like, yeah. Yahoo Mail's gone. Like, every single platform has immediate payment. And, you know, when somebody signs up for an account, that, I mean, we have to unmanage payments. We can't do managed payments without having our bank account on there. Right. Yeah. And so here's the other thing that was interesting. Let's go from managed payments. They were talking about options to get paid faster, which I thought I thought was great. And this is what I what I mean by this. So you ever had the managed payments where you have a great weekend of sales, right? You make, you know, whatever, several hundred, several thousand dollars. And your payment on Tuesday, it's not on Monday, by the way, it's on Tuesday, right? Is $27.99. You're like, wait a second. I just sold all this stuff and I'm getting paid out $27 or whatever, some obnoxious amount. So I'm hoping that when they're saying about options to get your money faster, I'm hoping that's what they mean, that you will get that money sooner. Uh, because right now, I mean, on the holidays, it's rough. Like you could have a ton of sales. And if Monday's a holiday, you're not getting that money till Wednesday. Right now, you know, you and I've said this before, your business should be in a place where you're not living, hoping to get that managed payment to come in to be able to pay the bills every single time. But there may be some people that are, and there may be some people that need that money at a certain time. And if it's locked up in managed payments, uh, that's kind of rough. That, that's, you know, as I hate saying this, I, I do miss the PayPal uh, where, you know, when I sell things on Bonanza, I have that money instantly. The moment that person pays, that money is in my PayPal, and then I can choose what I want to do with it. With managed payments, it's a couple of days sometimes. It's three days. And then you don't even know how much you're going to get paid out. You may think you're going to get paid out this amount and then it ends up being half of that or a third of that or a quarter of that. Does that all make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, what can you do? I, I I think like businesses, stores and stuff, like when, when it's like a regular visa transaction, um, they don't have access to the money right away. It's usually a period of time. so. Again, I'm trying to be positive here and just think of like paradigm shift, like working like you're more like a business as opposed to just, yeah, somebody, if somebody's paying you on offer up or Craigslist, you want the money in hand today, right? But mm -hmm. if you're running as a store and somebody's doing a transaction through Visa and it takes a day or two for that transaction to clear and you to get your money, like it makes sense um, that that would happen. But it is a bummer. It is a bummer when uh, you don't have access to it right away. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I know that's one of the biggest complaints that people have about managed payments is that, you know, you have all these sales and you have to wait days until you get some of that money. Now, and I know Poshmark's the same way. Like, I think it's like three days. I think Mercari's the same way. But when you're used to that quick money on PayPal, like, it's kind of hard to, to shift over. So, all right. And the last thing I want to take away from this is I loved how there was an emphasis on the secondary market than in years past. And I think a lot of this is being pushed by Jordan Swingham um, and some of the other uh, eBay execs out there. Uh, so, you know, we went to eBay open two years ago and correct me if I'm wrong. Did it seem like there, we were trying to be like Amazon, like eBay was trying to be Amazon? Oh, for sure. They And we talked about that a little bit is the idea of eBay does what eBay does well because it's not Amazon. It, it's filling a niche that Amazon doesn't fill as well as eBay does. And so trying to do, I mean, the, the way they kind of wanted to have warehouses where you could basically have turned on repeat buys of like toilet paper and stuff like that was, it seemed a little odd uh, that mm -hmm. that was the focus, but it makes sense. So if majority of eBay sales are not really secondary things, right? Most of the sales are new. Uh, that they would put a lot of emphasis on that. But I would imagine that majority of people going to an eBay open event aren't going to be big box stores or stores that are running private label on those types of things, new things. It's going to be the everyday guy or girl like us that's just selling things that we're thrifting or going to garage sales or retail arbitrage. And so I would hope that they would say, okay, maybe this is only 20% of our our gross revenue as a company is this population of, of resellers. Yeah. However, this is a special group that we have that other platforms don't have. And these are the ones who are going to be coming to these events that are going to be giving us feedback. Uh, and so it's good that they kind of focus a little bit more on us. Right. Yeah. yeah I don't imagine that if, if you're, if you're, if you're a store doing millions of dollars in sales on new items 
or or you're doing private label a lot on eBay and Amazon, you're probably not going to an eBay open event, right? Just seems like to me. No, I, I agree. I mean, we did run into some people that were, you know, but I would say on the face, eBay organically is secondary goods, right? But remember, 80% of the items that are sold on eBay are brand new, right? And so it it, it is an interesting dynamic. I mean, eBay is known for used goods, but a lot of their money doesn't come from used goods. And a lot of their money, well, not all the revenue comes from sales. And we're going to talk about that. So that's eBay open. Uh, that's the main takeaways. If you want to take a look at it, you can go to eBay for business on YouTube and you can check all the videos. Those are the top takeaways I got from being at eBay open. I'm hoping that they make it a live event uh, again, uh, because I think it'd be great. All right. So I thought this was interesting. So eBay earnings report uh, came out for the second quarter. And it, this was kind of, and so I don't know, I, I wish I didn't take out my money out of eBay stock. eBay stock is up again. I think it's like at $73. It's gone up 48% over the last year. So eBay stock is doing well. So if you're invested in eBay stock, good for you. I got out and I got into crypto at the beginning of the year. And I'm now kind of, you know, I don't know. Maybe I should have stuck with eBay. So uh, eBay earnings report. So they reported they have 2 million less buyers than they did last year, but that kind of makes sense, right? It's a different time. It's, uh, you know, we're not in the peak of the time that we were last year. Um, but their gross merchandise volume was down 7% compared to the same time last year. So gross merchandise value is how much profit they make on items that they sell, right? And that's how they get their money from fees and all that stuff. But their revenue, even though their gross merchandise sales were down, and the number of buyers went down, their revenue went, went up by 331 million, but their gross merchandise volume went down by 1.5 billion. Yeah. So they- it's they said all the ways they're charging us. Ah, so there we go. There you have it. So that, and that's what it is. So this is the Motley Fool, which I, I like reading some Motley Fool stuff. I think they have some good stuff, uh, but this is what their key points were from their reports is they said, eBay stock price is up 48.1% year to date. eBay is making more money off its sellers. <laughs> I mean, and they just said, and, and they brought that up. They well, said, the uh, customers. Yeah. yeah. And said, you know, um, and let me read real quick. The same trend affected the gross merchandise volume on eBay. In other words, the total dollar amount of sales transacted on eBay. This is crucial because eBay takes a percentage of sales as its main revenue source in quarter two, 2021. Gross merchandise value was down 7% compared to the same quarter last year. Again, this is not a surprise given the comparison with surge in sales in Q2 of 2020. A bright spot in the quarter for eBay was increasing the transaction take rate by over 200 basis points from the same quarter last year. This rate increased from 9.2% in Q2 2020 to 11.3% this year. That allowed eBay to earn more revenue in Q2 2021 than a year ago quarter, even with lower gross merchandise value. And so the reason they were able to increase that was, you know, they not having PayPal, right? Like we look at it as similar fees, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's eBay, right? eBay is like theirs. Yeah. And, and the promoted listings, right? So, so even if the total number of sales go down, they can kind of manipulate that if they're doing a better job of marketing and doing promoted listings, right? Pushing to, to people the, the, the items they want to sell. So if more of their sales come from promoted listings, because you have to imagine, I mean, obviously they're taking a little bit more. We talked about that. I felt like they were taking more than they were before. Um, my total, you know, net profit seemed to have taken a little bit of a hit. Uh, but mm -hmm. in addition to that, they've changed their pricing structure for stores, right? Like stores have gotten cheaper. You can, we were able to actually like downgrade a little bit and have more listings. So it's not that people, and I think that goes to show that that eBay's model does not need to be charge a ton of money for a store and charge insertion fees and charge final value fees. And like they can get rid of that store portion or lower that store portion. If they handle the other fees, right, they'll still make more money. And in some ways I'm better off because I'm not paying for a store subscription. I don't, I don't need. Are you talking? I can't hear you, Alondo. Can you hear me? All right. 
It might just be me. My my system might be wrong, but I can't hear Orlando at all. We'll give it a second to see if it comes back in. I don't want to be talking over Orlando. Can you see your uh, your mic working if you click on your camera mic setting? This is how organic we are. I'm back. You're back? No? All right. Am I back? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, everyone that's listening uh, right now. That was kind of weird. Um, just trying to. I was trying you to. Mute mess. yourself. Let's be honest. No, no. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Oh, now I can't hear you again. Orlando, oh, Orlando. What what an episode. Okay, I'm back. Hold on. Don't mess with stuff. The key the key takeaway is don't mess with don't don't fix what's not broken. And so here's the part of the podcast where Mike sings and dances because Orlando is out. And I, I can't hear him. Oh, you're cutting in and out, man. I am? Yep. So go ahead and talk again. How about now? All right, I think you're good. Okay, sorry everyone listening to the podcast. I don't know if we're gonna edit that. I don't know if Mike's gonna work his magic. It's just kind of the oh, natural. No, thing. This, is, this is this is in there, man. That's what happens more on the. Here's the thing: we are 46 minutes into this podcast. If somebody's still listening to our podcast at this point or watching the YouTube, they 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 get it. They care. That, that little hiccup's not gonna bother them. Now, if that happened like two minutes in, you know, there's probably people like, "Who are these guys?" Oh, wow. So. So anyways, okay, this is what I wanted to say. All right, going back to the fact that eBay is making more money off its sellers than it is out of the stuff that's being sold. If eBay is pushing promoted listings, if eBay is pushing pay-per-click, I do think those kind of items are going to end up higher in the search. I think the days of eBay where you just, if you just found a good item with great sell-through rate, that will go to, you know, it'll help, but it won't be the end all. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I think, I think there's going to be more hoops that we're going to jump through. But here's the thing. eBay isn't unique in that. You get what I'm saying? Because, you know, if you go to Amazon, I mean, this is what Amazon does. Amazon makes it. They, I, who knows how much money they make off of doing that kind of stuff, off of charging uh, their sellers for all those goods. So just something to think about. That's right. All right. Hey, uh, a couple more. Uh, so... <laughs> I don't know if this is a new story, but a lot of people have messaged DMing us about Goodwill not allowing pictures and videos in their stores. And I'm not sure why. I don't know if they're getting a lot of bad PR. I don't know what's going Wait, did I say the name? The store that shall not be named. You named the store that shall not It's just that kind of episode. You know what we should do? We should just go in and start recording in Goodwill and see if we can get kicked out. That'd be a good thumbnail. That'd be good clickbait. I got kicked out of Goodwill. It would be. It would be. But, uh, you know, no one, I, it hasn't happened here, but just be aware if you're, you know, if you're an influencer or you're somebody that shoots video or whatever. But here's the thing. How, how do you gauge that? And everybody's on their phone. Like, that's what I mean. Somebody could be like, watching, like oh, I'm just on FaceTime, but they're really recording. Like, you cannot tell, unless you're like, you cannot have electronic devices in my oh, store. Like, they go down that road, man. They're, they're not going to, they're going to lose out on a ton of money. I mean, just regular customers would be like, I'm not going into your store. <laughs> That's bizarre. Yeah, dude, that'd, be, that'd be crazy. So anyways, just be aware. If you're, if you know, you're fine to shoot a video, take video or photos, like you may not be allowed to do that in that store. So, and the last thing uh, before we move on, uh, and this is nothing new, it happens every year. Uh, USPS is going to be raising their prices uh, beginning. Ugh. I'm trying to think what, but it's only for the Christmas time. So it's not. It's not a permanent thing. I mean, they do raise their rates oh, all the time. This is that time of the year where they charge more and they get stuff to their slower. Yes. No, exactly. We will get your package to its destination slower. But don't worry because we're going to charge you more for it. That is exactly what is happening. So, um, you know, more just time, more money. It, what's that? It's a more time, more money. There you go. So starting October 3rd. December 26, expect higher rate. Um, like, for instance, first class might be a little different. Uh, first class maybe go up. And there is talk about first class maybe going from three to five days. And so that, that would definitely be interesting. Uh, and, again, you know, just be aware. If you do free shipping, 
then you got to be aware of this. If you already do calculated shipping, then it's not going to matter that much unless you're concerned about the arrival time. So be aware USPS is increasing uh, their rates. All right. That is our uh, reseller topics. Real quick, though, I did want to talk about this topic. So we had, Mike, there's a lot of people that got some skull shavers this last month. Yeah. And, nice. well, you know, because we get paid out a certain amount, right, based on people buying skull shaver. And, um, you know, it's funny. As somebody had uh, somebody had DM me or it was one of the messages. I forget who it was. And they said, Orlando, do you really use skull shaver? And I was real about it. I said, yeah. I mean, I mean, do I look scruffy? I mean, I got, I should be pretty smooth right now. Uh, but I used to be a straight, I used to be a razor guy all day long. And then once I got the school shaver, now the school shaver, I would say, doesn't get you razor close, but it's pretty close. It's like, it's not 100%, but it's 99.9999%. So I don't know. Do you feel the same about that school shaver, Mike? Yeah, I mean, you're never going to get as close. I mean, they, they probably advertise like it does get all the way, you know, like it's a razor. And it, it just can't, right? Like if you're using a, a blade to your head, an actual blade, uh, but you also risk cutting yourself. I feel like using a razor blade takes a little bit more time. Um, the convenience of, I mean, I was in the hospital with my wife having a child and I was able to shave my head like, you know, a couple times, no big deal. And I didn't have to worry about taking a razor into a bathroom. And so there are so many conveniences. It's quick, it's easy. Um, and yeah, it gets it really close. I would say if I asked the average person, they would assume that I use a razor on my head. Um, I know I don't because it, it's not quite that close, but I mean, it's not a huge difference. You're, you're talking like, you're talking like a couple hours after you use a razor, like that's what your hair is like. So yeah. yeah. So anyways, go to skullshaver.com, use our promo code pure P U R E, uh, and you can get a skull shaver and have a smooth dome like Mike, like Mike and I. So Again, promo code P U R E. Hey, if you haven't been following us on social media, we are Peers of Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We are Peers of Cast on Twitter and on Clubhouse. You could always give us a call, 619 738 1170. That's 619 738 1170. Let me slow it down. That was kind of fast. 619 738 1170. Or shoot us an email at Podcast at gmail.com. That's Pure Hustle Podcast at gmail.com. You could also you know, watch us on YouTube. If you're listening to a podcast, come on over. Hey, we're almost to 6k subscribers and it'd be awesome to get there. Uh, you know, it's so funny. We have so many listeners on podcasts in comparison to how many people actually watch on the YouTube. So it'd be awesome if you came on, uh, you know, just come on over, just hit that subscribe button. And if you like the podcast and you heard it, just go over to YouTube and hit that like button. It helps us out in that algorithm and hit that bell notification. So you can catch our episodes that drop on Monday or Monday mini and our Saturday you know, it all depends. We we just decide what we want to uh, drop on Saturdays. Uh, and uh, thank you all for your reviews. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to 500. Uh, so really appreciate every single one of you. All right. It is time. Are we are we doing a sound for this one? No, we don't have sounds, but I can just uh, I can just do it. Bo -bo 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 bolo. That, that was pretty good. That, that sounded pretty close. All right. So what's your bolo, Mike? Uh, so my bolo is, and I've mentioned this before, but I had a really good sale, so it's time to bring it up again, I feel. Uh, but heavy-duty office supplies, like heavy-duty staplers, heavy-duty three-hole punch, oh, yeah. uh, those types of things, or like um, paper cutters, right? If you get, I mean, I'm talking things that are from the 90s, things from the early 2000s, maybe even things from the 80s. If they're a good, solid metal, people know what's good, right? Like you can go on Amazon and I can buy a three hole punch for probably $3 and it's plastic and it'll break. Or I can spend like a lot of money on like a pretty good metal one. But some people just know like, Hey, they used to make it better, right? Like I, I had this one that I used in my office and we've always had this one. It's never given us a problem. This is the one I want. So my go-to, I mean, you're going to find certain brands that do better than others, but is if you're at a thrift store or garage sale and it's, big and heavy right it's like whoa this thing has some weight to it and it feels like it's pretty solid metal i would look up the brand and usually there's a brand there's model number and it's pretty quick to see you know uh, what are these selling for so specifically i would say three hole punch and staplers are pretty good you might have to test them um you know especially staplers right usually they're going to have the staples with them or they're easy to get uh, but they can sell really good you can pick them up for a couple bucks at a garage store or thrift store 
And my most recent one was like a $40 sale, right? So these aren't too bad and often overlooked because people are just thinking, oh, office supplies, no good. But if it's older office supplies that's nice and sturdy, definitely check it out. Check sold comps because it might be money. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I, I've, I've sold some staplers for like 80 bucks that I picked up for like yeah. 510. So yeah, I agree. All right, so this one, if you have not caught our, uh, caught my latest uh, YouTube drop when I went to thrift stores. And so this is going to be a bolo and it'll probably be a house of the week coming up soon. So I came across these two uh, vintage gas station. I don't know if you call them displays, dioramas, whatever you call them. Uh, once One was a Gulf, uh, G-U-L-F, self-service gas station clock, but it was like a gas station that had lights and everything. And another one was a mobile one. And, you know, the only reason I looked at these, if you catch the YouTube, is because they had them listed at the Salvation Army for $175 each. And I was like, whoa. Like, I, okay, if they're that much, I might as well look it up. And, yeah. I was like, all right. And I looked it up, and it was worth it because, yeah, they are – I didn't know. I didn't know that there was – Kind of like a following for these things. So if you go now, you got to be careful because you could get some modern ones that look vintage, or you can get some from a you know a gas station that doesn't matter. Like the ones I saw that were money were Golf, uh, Texaco, right? These companies that you don't see that often anymore. Uh, mobile, you do see a lot more, but uh, Mobile with the Pegasus, okay, and then Sinclair, you know the dinosaur, or is that is that the dinosaur? I think it is. Um, and so keep an eye. So basically, it looks like a little model of little model of gas station with lights on it. And so, uh, you know, they can go if you, they're from Danbury Mint or maybe another company. They can sell for like two to three hundred dollars, uh, sometimes more. I've seen some for five to six hundred. Uh, and so definitely if you see these anywhere, I think these are the kind of items you'll go to a garage sale and somebody's just going to have on the side and they're just trying to offload and you'll pick up for like five to ten bucks. That's my guess. Uh, because had I seen these in the wild at a garage sale, I would not have known how valuable these things are. And I may have passed them up. And so it was kind of cool. Um, you know, I got, as soon as I listed them, I got a bunch of messages. Hey, I've been looking for these. What's the deal you, you want to work with me? Da, 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 da. And so I'll, I'll let you guys know in our hustle of the week, how it goes with these items, uh, in a couple weeks. So definitely check out gas station collectible there. Basically anything, you know, there's a, I think it's called Petroliana. Uh, the genre of these kind of, you know, like on American Pickers, Frank Fritz sells a lot of this. If you find like clocks, like a Shell gas station clock or Golf or Mobile, uh, you know, it lights up, whatever, they're money. So definitely keep an eye for those things. Uh, they're kind of cool, too. I, I would say they're kind of hard to let go. <laughs> I, I kind of once I saw how cool mine was, I was like, I don't know if I want to sell it. But the profit was just too good. So keep an eye out for those bolos. All right, Mike, what are you looking forward to here? You know, I'm just looking forward to um, kind of getting back into a routine. Um, it's like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. It's when you're, when you can't get good momentum going, when it's like, hey, I sourced really good for two weeks, but then I haven't sourced in another week or two. And then I got 10 listings done in a, in a day, but then I go, you know, two weeks without listings because other things are coming up. It's, it's hard to, you're just jerking, right? Like it's like a jerk start and it just, it's, it's not good. So I'm really looking forward to um, having having a little bit of momentum based off of a schedule. And believe it or not, as a part-time uh, reseller, I find that working full-time, you know, as a teacher, you'd think when I'm on breaks would be the best time, but that's the easiest time I feel like to lose momentum and, and, and routine. Mm -hmm. And sometimes working more hours in a regular job or having a specific set schedule, maybe in something else in your life can actually help you with routine and keeping momentum moving forward. So I uh, kind of just hope in the next couple of weeks to get some uh, a, a specific schedule going and uh, making some more money on eBay. Nice. All right. So for myself, I mentioned I'm shifting a little bit over to Amazon. Uh, one of the reasons, too, is Amazon's holiday selling, uh, holiday selling requirement to be able to sell toys is coming up. And so if you haven't caught our update episode two, uh, two episodes ago, episode 253, uh, if you want to sell anything merchant fulfilled on Amazon, which I strongly encourage you to do so during Q4, you have to have your first Amazon sale before September 1st. Okay, and then from uh, August 15 uh, through August 14 or 15, you have to have at least 20 seller fulfilled items, which is merchant fulfilled. 
All right, so I'm working on that. Um, I already got, uh, at the time of this podcast, I got like five under my belt, got another 20 left. Uh, it's getting easy. I mean, I got all kinds of stuff to sell. Uh, but if you haven't, definitely check it out. You can Google Amazon holiday selling requirement. Uh, I definitely encourage you to have that in your back pocket in case you want to use that during Q4. And uh, I'm also looking to streamline the process of my helper. My helper has been great, but I want to get to a place where it's like, hey, I drop off on Wednesdays and I pick up on Wednesdays. And you know, she knows she's pretty much listed shoes for me, listed shirts, pants, uh, all you know, all kinds of items. And so I'm hoping that during this Q4, I'm just sourcing and I'm just dropping stuff off to her. And she's the one taking pictures, listing it, and I'm just approving them. And I can keep on going with Amazon. And uh, yeah, and just getting ready for FBA, getting boxes, getting tape, uh, getting my garage cleared out so I can have a workstation uh, to pack things up and send them out to the Amazon warehouse. So that is what I'm looking forward to. All right, man. Seems like I felt like we we, we had a lot in this episode. Oh. So, so it's good. Hey, it's quarter three. We're almost at quarter four. And things, if they haven't rebounded for you yet, they will rebound. Just uh, just keep moving. I, I got to tell you how many times I've been discouraged and, and what it took was me just moving forward, knowing that things will rebound, and they did rebound. So with that being said, make sure to be real. Be relevant. And be reselling. Please. Peace.